You know what this means. Super glue baking soda. That's not what this means, but. It's time for a good old fashioned riverbank build. It's all the pieces of sandpaper on my desk. Knife with a fresh blade, straight edge. Wire bending pliers and wire, two pieces, in case I mess up. Gonna put the sheath on the Delphine 03. Tungsten powder instead of lead. We're gonna try that. That was a saw and my pokey thing. A pokey thing. Accelerator, medium thick black super glue. Should put that with the other super glue so it doesn't leak. Oh boy. Devcon five minute epoxy clear coat. We can try. A few brushes. Super Silver Sparkle from Bait Plastics. It's actually a unadditive that has real metal flake in it. So you can't put it back in the microwave when you're heating up plastisol and adding this and stuff. But this might look really good in the epoxy. Simple stuff for colors. Thinking white belly, black top, maybe red somewhere in there with the clear coat over it. That could look really good. And you know what? I'd like to enjoy the day without a hand wound. Jabbing a chisel. I can just drill. Hooks and split rings, needle nose. I kind of know what I'm making. That's why I'm doing this. I think I have a pretty good idea. But at the same time, I take these lightly. I'm... It usually doesn't work out, so don't expect this to work out, and we can enjoy the show together. Let's go. We got the big camera. That's right. I'm bringing the bait caster. Let's go. Squirrel! Should we do it on the riverbank? Like actually on the riverbank instead of the backwater bank? Is that where we should do it, guys? <laughs> I think I see where, well, it looks all muddy over there. That's the pike spot right there. That's, this is the end of a uh, little section and the mouth is way down, way down there. And that's the river. Let's go check the rocks down there. This is back up to sit on in case. This looks fine though. I even have a piece of wood to do this on, so I don't have to do it on a rock. Let's grab this. I think I see a cottonwood tree over here and a lot of poison ivy. Step carefully. Oh, yeah, yeah. Step carefully. Step carefully. <laughs> Sometimes you have to repeat it. That's a cottonwood. The bark for co from cottonwoods trees is blah, 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 blah. The bark off of cottonwood trees is good for making lures. Oh yeah, I just touched some poison ivy. That's what that is, right? That looks like a good piece. That's the stuff. Quite convenient that there was a cottonwood tree right there. Ouch. Woo. Under the fingernail splinter. So it's probably healthy to remember. I only brought size eight and size 10 hooks. So this thing shouldn't be more than three inches, if those hooks want to make sense. I brought nothing to draw with, other than paint, but I'm not about to draw out the shape of this with paint. I'll score it with my pokey thing. Dude. I should take this home and wash it off and mold it. Okay, it's something. You can't even see, but I'm gonna start cutting. Oh, dang. Sorry, fellas, that wind. Out of cottonwood bark, this is gonna be pretty cool. Oh my goodness, my lens. Did you guys hear that? Okay, I think you're good now. You're making a horrible scratchy noise while trying to zoom. So since you guys are all bait making experts, because you watch this channel, you know that with a glide bait, you have to weigh it. There's a lot of stuff you have to do correctly for it to work. And I'm gonna be straight up with you right now. I'm gonna kind of halfway do those things. I'm sure you know what I mean. It's the nature of riverbank builds. So first of all, a joint needs to be kind of cut. You know how with my jig and vise, I can cut a V joint very nicely. So to give it an angle, I'm just, I'm gonna guess the angle and just cut. I'm not gonna think about this too much. <laughs> this is not perfect. I'm gonna leave it at that though. There's multiple cuts in same directions. It'll clean up, don't worry. Now. 
that's where the tail fin goes. It is time to unsheathe the Delphino 3. I forgot to bring lure eyes. Well, that's okay, I got black and white and red paint. We can dot an eye. I would say that that worked out. We got a great body shape for a bank build right there. I know the joint looks like absolute garbage, but it can all be smoothed off, it'll be fine. We're gonna cut pilot holes first before we cut through the joint. This is lure making on my lap. That's what this is. Oops. I think this wire is too small of diameter for, for me to grab. Yeah. Dang it. I can't do it this way. What do I do? Just bend the ends and shove it in with glue? I have to bend the ends and shove it in with glue. Dang it. I don't care. I'll do it. So that's not too bad for the line tie and hook hangers, but for the joint hardware, that's gonna be insane. I'll do my best, but... No, I still have to connect the two joint hard... How am I gonna do that? Well, regardless, I'm gonna cut through. That snake keeps saying hi. Ouch. So the front piece looks amazing. This is the back piece. <laughs> we'll uh, clean this up. So if this is to be a successful riverbank build, I realize what I need to do. Just like with the line tie, I have to scrunch the back ends over, insert them, but before installing the final piece, I need to uh, loop them through and squish them in with glue. It just sounds like a mess in my head, but it's, pro it's probably possible. It's probably fine. Okay, this has to work because I don't have any wire left. Let us drill a lead hole. Sorry, tungsten hole surprised by my choice of uh, tungsten hole placement right there in the nose and then there's gonna be one pretty far back on the tailpiece right there but that's gonna make this bait much more stable than it would have been otherwise if I am able to make each one of those connections this clean this is gonna work those are some tiny little bend overs but they're gonna hold nice and strong I think My finger just got drenched in super glue and it hardened. Wow. So this is a powder that you really should not have to worry about blowing away. Oh, I saw some blow away right there. Some tungsten down there. Let's see what super glue does. It soaked in the wood around it. And it just made like a fizzled up clear coat right there. Okay, it feels a little heavier. Super glue bath. Wow, that cottonwood bark looks pretty good actually. Holy smokes. That just fizzled up out of there somehow. Pretty good. Not bad. Oh! Almost lost it. A little bit of mud and a bait never hurt. Nice. I'm feeling a little bit more confident. I can still loop these through like that and somehow get them in there. Like that. So this has all been super glued. Let's see how it sinks. This is a river, so I have to be careful not to just let my bait go away, but it might float. It floats. But the hooks are gonna help. Hooks. They don't help enough. Wow, that's close though. We're just gonna get it to sink. And that is where the weight's going. I like how the tungsten powder works though. It's a more gradual weight than lead because it's powder still, even though it's tungsten. I tested it and realized that it actually needed a third, right? a third hole in the back there. This bait requires some weight, man. Okay, what are we dealing with now? I feel like I just spent an hour trying to weigh this bait correctly. 
and I don't want to let it go to test it, but I feel like it's right. That was not an hour, it was probably like 20 minutes, but I think it's weighed correctly. I'm gonna stand up, I've been sitting for too long. So next, we're gonna paint these crusty pieces of lure. And I'm gonna put some black on the top. More black than white. Whoa, we're doing some blending. Not bad. Well, painting those eyes was a giant waste of time because that silver stuff is so opaque. It's thick as heck, fellas. The five minute epoxy is already drying. I really wish I had somewhere to hang this to dry, but I don't. Maybe fishing string and a stick. Okay. Thank you, tree. Here comes the best part. We're gonna glue some living organic matter into this thing. We'll see how long that lasts. That was a very difficult bait to make on the riverbank. Two-piece glider though. You hear it? It knocks. It's got some noise. The five minute epoxy is still going to harden and it'll make more noise. The hooks are the right size. That's not bad. I'm kind of proud of that. Let's fish it. It works. It slow sinks and it swims when you reel in. It actually swims. I can hear the knock too from up here. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that for a riverbank build. That's the best one yet, like by far. Dang, that works so good. <laughs> that works really good, fellas. <clears throat> Let's not lose this bait. Whoa, I just caught a fish. I just caught a fish with this bait, wow. This feels like a good, ooh, it's a wiper. Is this a wiper? Whoa, guys, it's official, giant shad. Dude, this is the biggest shad I've ever held. That is so pretty. Look at you. I'm gonna keep you as bait, I'm sorry, but look at you, that is a special, they're slippery. Giant shad, like two-piece gliders that you make on the riverbank, it's official. You know what, I'm not gonna keep them. I don't feel like processing them. Be free. Something bit him hard. Be free. Oh sweet, that was a one day too. That was like a one afternoon kind of thing actually. My leaf is already gone. It has a better action without it. I'm gonna spend another half hour here maybe and see if another fish can be caught. If not, I know where to go. I don't think we've ever done a riverbank build and not gone to Jesse's. Let's keep the tradition going. Tradition. Oh, I'm getting good hits. When I just zip it across the top, I'm getting good hits. That was a hit. Give me that fish. Oh, great. It's a tiny, tiny bass. It's official. Large mouth. Like two piece swim baits you make on the riverbank. <laughs> I said it. It counts. Oh, that was a bluegill. What is this? Oh, it's a bass. They're fighting very lively. This one's not having a good day. More official.
after each cast, my bait's getting more and more waterlogged because I lost a chunk off the side right there. It's starting to run like a wet sock. It's getting heavier. I can cast it further. <laughs> pretty fast. Three inch slick swim, 16th ounce, ounce jig head. Always fish the 1.7. What a three inch prey bait. That one's gorgeous. I went over there and caught a bass. This is a, a, probably the biggest one of the day. It's saying nothing though. It's two days later. There is so much to catch a fish on in this shop. We have all of the obliblated baits. Blah, 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 blah. So many baits from other people as well. I hung up the old two-piece glider riverbank build. I guess it's not old. It's like the most recent lure I made, but I'm not gonna try to seal it and keep fishing with it or anything. Just hung it up, I'm gonna keep it. Little keepsake. Enjoy the bonus fishing slash gardening. Thanks for watching. On to the next bait. Dang, Benny. You all need to see this. Artist Instagrams, artists, <laughs> what? <laughs> artists Instagrams in the description. I can't say that. Artists Instagrams in the description. In the description, I rolled my R. There wasn't, there was no R, but I rolled it. That is just wonderful, thank you. Steve, the never ending project list on Instagram. Sent me a bunch of stuff. Look at those. These are 3D printed molds, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, the paint smells strong. I like it. Beautiful paint job on a soft plastic bait. Look at those fins. They're so flappy. Those are actually gonna move and flap and tantalize in the water. That's a nice bait. I respect that soft plastic bait right there. And we got some hard baits. Take a look at these. This is my studio light. It's a one billion lumen Makita with a five amp hour battery on it. <laughs> One billion. I can get behind a paint scheme like that. These are 3D printed. It's got a little rattle in it. That'll catch a fish immediately. This will probably catch a fish immediately. Yeah, little tiny rattles. I like those, the quieter ones. You can see the 3D printed pattern behind the clear coat and behind some paint. That actually makes it look pretty cool. And a smaller little purple one. Good color. It was wet inside of that bag. <laughs> was it? Yeah, he must have tested it and then bloop, going off the marling. There is a neato mosquito, a little soft plastic in this bag. Look at that. What a miraculous Ned bait. I think that's what this is for. He sent them with a specific jig head to stand up with this tantalizing hunk of meat off the back. Wow. This stuff's cool.
He even sent an open pour 3D printed mold. We might pour this at the end of this video. Well, actually, these look to be the bait. Ooh, nice and pink. That pink tail. And then he absolutely suplexed me with a giant box full of baits. Wow. And jig heads. These are probably handmade jig heads. And there's parts of the plastic that perfectly meet up with the hook points. These things like rig themselves. Man, dude. And these plastics don't have a gloss finish. They have a matte. Well, it's like a sheen that, look at that. They have a very shiny but broken up finish. It's great. It's unusual. It just, it probably makes them more visible in the water. There's more light being bounced around in weird places and I'm excited. Thank you, Steve. Never ending project list. All links below. We're fishing with nothing but the never ending project list stuff and I think some fish are about to get caught, fellas. I didn't purposely smack my rods together there in correlation with how I was saying that. That was an accident. Like a coach giving a pep talk and he like claps his hands. He's like, let's go guys. Like I didn't, I didn't do that there. Starting with this amazing 3D printed open pour bait right here. At least that's what I think it is. I have that entire tackle box that he sent and the other bait, the creature bait. We're gonna try to get a fish on everything. Oh, that was a hit, that was a hit. Why did it miss? I have stinger treble. Why did I miss that fish? Oh, no. Look at that. Look at what that bass did. I only brought one of these, so shucky darns. I don't know, we might break out the big swim bait again, but for now, I think I'm just gonna bring one rod. This is what we're going with first. I like that. It really stands up. Oh man, that was a fish. Bob Saget, it just ripped my bait. We had another one on. Wow, they're down there. They're right there. I think this one's done, fellas. There's one. Look at that. It's official. Tiny walleyes. Like Steve's baits. Oh, that was another bite. They're liking the pink. There we go, that feels better. What do we got? I think it's a smallie. Wow, he really got hooked, look at that. Yeah, I don't think you can get any more hooked. What a healthy smallmouth. It's official, smallmouth. Like Steve's baits as well. Good luck. <laughs> There's what? Oh, I know. It's a crowded place. The tree comes up right here. I need to try that like every time I come here. I'm telling you, the prey bait. No, I tell people the prey mm -hmm. bait's really good, but they have to fish with it, you know? Yeah. A double craw? Yeah, it's really? crazy. Wow, ah, that's like a, I know that mold. What is that mold? Do you have that mold? It's fat guy. Fat guys? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or the hog. That's like the hog, yeah. but like a creature style hog. Yeah. Dang. Or I call it the super freak. He calls it steroid freak, but it's the boat. Yeah. And Do you have more? It. I don't, I have one left, I think, in my, at home. Here, take some, those are four, four inch slick swims. The tails are a little bent up because they've been in that box forever, but, yeah, but no, that poor go, thing. Just don't go over here. Yeah, you're going to have to like pull it, it just the string and then whip it. it. <laughs> well, thanks again. Right. 